Now we will discuss the cardinal theta strings and how to encode them into as a SAT problem. So what is a cardinality constraint? Let's suppose you have uh, n bits p1 to pn and some of these bits is less than equal to k or greater than equal to k or equal to k all sorts of relations you can imagine and uh, the thing is that they they interpreted as a single bit and but they sum them as a, as a numbers and then you compare with k if a constraints are given to you in this form then you want to convert into a, a boolean formula and uh, such that you can give it to set solver in this form you cannot give it to set solver because there is a, a non-boolean reasoning going on to to for comparing with k so you need to need a translation step uh, let's first see summing of p1 equals to 1 we can split the requirement into two parts you can say that at least one of them must be true and that can be easily encoded as, as a disjunction, disjunction of p1 to pn, which is naturally falls into CNN form. Now, the second requirement is that not more than one pi's are true. So if any time two pi's become true, then it should become unsatisfiable. So exactly what you can code for all combination of i and j's, you can say that uh, not of pi or not of pj is must be true both of them are true then it becomes false the previous encoding we just saw is is quadratic and uh, because at most constraints it, it was producing uh, quadratically many clauses now we ask the question can we do better yes we can do better uh, we can introduce by introducing fresh variables we can do in a linear size constraint let si be the fresh variable to indicate the count has reached 1 by index i. So the fresh variable si means that if you count number of bits uh, which are true up to 1 to i, you see that if any one of them has been 1, then you say si equals to 1. So uh, how do we encode? You, first we encode that uh, if p1 is 1, then s1 has to be value 1. Okay? So if p1 is 1, then you have at least one bit which is 1 before uh, p1 bit. If you add these constraints. You also add these constraints that if you have, either you have seen in the past one or just now you have seen one, therefore you have seen one by SI. So that's, that's the that's, it, that's implementation of definition of SI. If once you have seen uh, uh, one in the past, then there should be no more one. So therefore, you need to say not of PI. At the very end, you also check if S of N minus one is true, then you don't have not of PI. So same the constraint is all is in the last step you don't need this this last so bitwise encoding of the same constraint p1 to p1 is less than equal to one there is another way of encoding in which you only need to introduce log n number of bits uh, slightly uh, difficult to follow idea but once you understand it's pretty trivial so please be carefully pay attention uh, for each uh, i is equal to i in 1 to n, you have, uh, you you introduce a bits b1 to bm, which encodes the binary encoding of i minus 1. For example, if i, I is equal to 3, the binary encoding of, of uh, this guy would be uh, 1, 1, 1, and I, depending on how many, what is n, that many zeros you can find. Then what do you do? You you say that if pi is equal to 1 then your fresh variable r1 to rm should be equal exactly equals to that encoding and and you just had this constraint for each i so now if let's suppose pi th bit becomes true then r1 to rm has to take a specific value and if let's say pi plus 2 becomes 0 then one of them has to take a different value and that will not work so 
that's uh, that's how you can encode less than equal to n okay an example will make it clear let's suppose you have a p1 plus p2 plus p3 less than equal to 1 so its log number of bits is 2 so we need to introduce two variables and so we can say if p1 is true then r1 must be 0 and r2 equals to 0 if p2 is true then r1 equals to 0 and r2 equals to 1 similarly you for p3 you have uh, r1 equals to 1 and uh, r2 equals to 0 now any of the time these two becomes uh, true uh, you will have a contradiction because these two guys don't agree okay so therefore you will encode less than now let us uh, look at the uh, the more general cardinality constructs where you want to sum of the bits and you will check it less than equal to k so there are we will, we will cover three uh, possible ways of doing it and this one which we have uh, added as an extra slide and this one is another opt very optimal way of encoding which uh, you may find in your friends papers if you want to encode that uh, p1 to pn uh, bits are some less than equal to k then you can you have to essentially encode that k plus one variables must not be true at the same time what you can do is you can choose k plus one variables uh, from n variables and check this, that, that they're not sad uh, they're not true at the same time this can be encoded as a class so by choosing k plus one out of n variables you, you can you can basically encode all classes that's very inefficient way of doing it uh, so again we follow the idea of sequential count in, uh, counter encoding uh, in which you have uh, you'll introduce uh, this uh, fresh variables let's say in this case you need a sij a1 extra index and in sij you you saying that by the time you reach pi the sum of the variables from p1 to pi has reached j or not so that's the encoding of sij how do i turn into clauses and constraints let's see if you have p1 to be true that means by the position 1 uh, you have seen sum 1 we also say that uh, well, sum cannot reach more than 1 at the first step so you can simply say that s1 j where j more than equal to 2 uh, then is is not true now for other if the currently we see a a, a bit uh, true and or you have uh, reached uh, 1 uh, by si minus 1 uh, then you have reached 1 by the time you reach to the position i this is very similar to the previous encoding and uh, for other value of uh, j's you uh, you for example j is equal to 2 to k then uh, you have to make this encoding and in circuit form it looks far more clear what it is saying is that uh, sum up to this point has reached uh, uh, has been uh, has reached j right how how that has happened is is that uh, before the current bit your sum has reached j minus 1 and the current bit is 1 therefore the sum is j and or you have already seen j so these are two possibility and then that means sij has to be true and then you have to say that there are not too many bits true as soon as we hit k at some uh, some position then therefore no way that uh, afterwards any more bits cannot be true so you can say okay k sum to k has been reached so not you therefore now onwards you have not of pi so there is another way of uh, uh, doing uh, sum which we uh, less than equal to which is a very naive way we, you would do when if you did not do have you if you had not seen this discussion what do you do you sum bit these bits as like a numbers and use full address which you must have seen in your digital logic design courses and uh, and then uh, compare the sum against uh, against number k which is again can be implemented as a as a boolean circuit and then these circuits can be translated into a, 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 a boolean constraint so this is an order n encoding however the encoding is not considered good for sat solver 
since it is a not an arc consistent coating so uh, let's see what is not uh, what is arc consistency so what is arc consistency it's a very very abstract idea but it can be operationalized in a very specific situation in in a particular way and uh, we will just give you an instance of it uh, and from there you can in, uh, extrapolate yourself that how you can translate your general idea let's suppose you have a problem given to you as c which has some variables p1 to pn so these are the problem variables that appear in the problem then what you do you encode for example in, in our encoding we introduce sij's ri's whatever okay so some in this case let's suppose we introduce t1 to tk variables and then you encode the problem now it's a satisfiability problem and then e constraints you can pass on to sat solver and sat solve them this encoding is called car consistence if let's suppose you have a partial model m so in cdc when you are building a constraints for e you may be assigning few bits ones and zeros some remain unassigned so that's we call partial model of e some ti's are assigned some pi's are assigned others are left assigned if you project your model on p's basically ignore the all the assignment uh, on t's and just only focus on p's assignment and uh, and they do not satisfy c there's no way to assign other variables true or false uh, such that you whole custom become satisfied if that is the case then the unit propagation in e should trigger conflict immediately so it is it's essentially saying some if the in constraint c if there is inconsistency they should be immediately be reflected in e by unit propagation this is a certain satisfiable side on the satisfiability side if you project on variable p's okay and you do some sort of a local reasoning now there's an important concept what is a what constitutes a local reasoning it depends on problem to problem yeah? so we will give you an example of what the local reasoning means it means something easy to compute about its constraints and you can deduce some new facts by giving uh, some assumption on, on partial assignment you can if you can extend it to m prime by doing local reasoning the same extension should be possible by unit propagation in your uh, in your constraint e. so this means is the local re reasoning corresponds one to one with your unit propagation that's what it means to be arc consistent let's look at an example this def this definition is very abstract it may feel very awkward it has a definition like some some uh, some, some idea like local reasoning which is undefined this you may say that this this makes uh, little sense to you uh, let's look at an example we had we want to check that these bits are less than equal to one and when we encode it we introduce fresh variables sometimes okay so uh so what our consistency says our, cons our consistency says is that if any time your partial assignment makes any of the two pi's true that means you're not going to satisfy this constraint at all so unit propagation in encoding should immediately trigger unsatisfiability and it triggers a backtracking other thing should happen is that any time a pi is made true right any time a pi made true it's obvious that everybody else is zero right? so unit propagation should also have this property in your encoding that as soon as pi becomes true then all other variables become zero immediately by unit propagation so this these if your if your encoding has these two properties then you will say yeah voila i have a r consistency otherwise you don't intuitively you think that is the case i mean it seems to be a natural choice to have and it's good to have such choices but no it's not always the case let's see one encoding Let's suppose I want to say p1 plus p2 plus p3 is less than or equal to zero. Naturally, all the variables are zero. So it's a, a very local reasoning can tell you the assignment. Okay. So you don't need to really do sad solving here, but you can do in a very bad encoding. Let's suppose we can use this uh, this sum some way of doing it. You sum all these three bits and then using full adder, and then you produce sum and carry bits, right? And then you can say that both bits are false. Okay? So you can just say not of sum and not of carry, and then you have this encoding. This this constraint as a whole is saying that all the p1, p2, p3 must be zero. But uh, but if you try to apply 
uh, unit propagation without any decisions uh, this will not give you immediately a p1 p2 and p3 are zero 